All right, live na tayo. Good evening everyone. Welcome to the live Bible study of Metanoia Christian Ministries. Today is Saturday. Good evening. I'm with Brother Eric and Brother Ron. Brothers. Hey guys, magandang gabi sa lahat. Welcome to our Bible study. It's another Saturday. And uh, tonight we're going to be answering more questions from you guys. So definitely another interesting set of questions. Bibiruan nga kami bago nito. Sabi ko, mahirap yung questions ngayon. Parang exam lang. Ano? But, you know, it's good. It's good that we get to talk about these things. It's good that we have a proper biblical perspective on these matters. Kasi guys, importante, hindi naman yung opinion natin. Hindi opinion ni, uh, ni Pastor Macho, ni Brother Eric o akin. It's what does the Word of God say. So you decide for yourselves kung ano. Pero as far as, um, you know, our, as far as us here as a ministry, we will stand with God's Word. And we believe these answers to be, you know, what represents God's heart. So, yeah, you know, um, but right before we get to the questions, let's open up with a song of worship and just praise the Lord for he is good, he is awesome, and he loves us. Let's worship the Lord. Sabihin natin purihin ang ating Panginoon sa kanyang kabutihan.
Praise the Lord. So, magandang gabi. Good evening. Again, dear brothers and sisters, welcome to our live Bible study. And, uh, yeah, you know, we're excited to minister to you guys and share the word with you all. So, tonight, we're going to do another segment on, um, actually, tonight's topic naman will be on forgiveness. And uh, nothing nothing specific, pero it's actually very broad yung mga questions. But I believe these are some questions that a lot of people uh, are afraid to ask or a lot of people assume na alam na nila pero parang walang malinaw na sagot you know so we we pray that the word of God would shed light on that tonight and that you guys would be you know uh, enlightened by whatever uh, sharing we have this evening so yeah you know tonight it's going to be the questions and answers about Forgiveness. Well, very big, very big topic here. Very big topic. And to be honest, mga kapatid, medyo divisive din kasi talaga. Parang ano ba talaga? Forgiveness. Ano bang nangyayari pag ganito? Ano bang nangyayari? Pero anyway, you know, um, hindi ko natatagalan yung intro ko. I think we should just get right on it and just get, uh, go ahead and share and, and uh, take these questions one by one. So yeah, questions about forgiveness. And let's start off with our first question that says here, question number one, what is the correlation between Jesus dying on the cross and the forgiveness of my sins? How are these two things connected? Brother Eric, you want to take this first question? Uh, I think so important if you said you're a Christian. But if you understand, I think, ano yung, uh, the, I think Jesus dying on the cross and forgiveness, ano yung connection ng dalawa? If Jesus didn't die on the cross, our, yung sin pa natin nandiyan pa rin. So, Jesus dying on the cross is, yan yung dapat tayo yun. Dapat tayo yung death. So, Jesus did it for us para mabura yung penalty ng sin. Saka yung power ni sin. Kasi lahat tayo, from Adam, dapat pinanish ng tayo ni God. Pero He choose not to punish lahat tayo. And talagang He may make a way na yung sin natin matanggal sa atin. Kasi pag tayo magtatanggal, we need to pay yun, which is death nga. So, kung hindi ka namamatay, hindi ka pinarusa, ah, pinarusahan ni God doon sa sin mo, then, ano pa rin, ah, yun yung law ni God eh, na i-curse o may, may, may death na kapalit doon sa sin na nagawa natin. Or because of Jesus dying on the sin, hindi na natin kailangan dumaan doon. So every time if you really, really receive Jesus Christ, you receive yung ginawa niya, which isa dito is dying for our sin. So, sobrang importante. Sobrang, you have to understand this. Kasi if you do not understand this, feeling mo, yung sin mo, kailangan pa rin parusahan ni God. Pero because of Jesus Christ, God, hindi na siya galit. Yung wrath niya sa sin, binayaran ng Jesus Christ. So yun. Pastor Macho, Brother Ron. Yeah, napaka-importante ito eh. Kasi dapat ito talaga, kapatid, kung sino man yung nagtanong nitong question na ito, importante alam natin ito. Kasi ever since naman simula si Genesis, di ba? Kasi it's, kailangan ng blood eh. It's always need, yung blood kasi needed for the forgiveness of sins. Kaya nga, actually, forgiveness, dati nga covering lang eh. From, from Adam, di ba? Yung first blood sacrifice, yung yung pinandamit sa kanila hanggang dumating yung mga prophets, yung dumating sila Moses, na yung mga offering, yung mga gagawa nilang ram, yung mga ang offer para sa uh, yung blood sacrifice sila na ginagawa para to cover their sins. Hanggang ultimately, nagawa ng lahat ng yon na hindi na paulit-ulit na ginagawa, si Jesus ang gumawa. 
That was the total manifestation of God's goodness and grace. Yung namatay siya sa krus. At doon tayo tunay na naka, na, nakaranas at uh, naibigay ang tunay na kapatawaran. Once and for all, forgiveness for all sins. Yun yung nangyari doon. Kaya nga sa Ephesians 1.7, di ba, yung redemption through His blood. Yun yung tinanggap natin eh. Yung dahil sa dugo niya, kaya tayo napatawad. So ngayon, kung hindi natin naiintindihan, yung pagkamatay niya is para sa pagpapatawad ng kasalanan natin. Kailan man may hirapan tayong magpatawad kasi hindi natin natanggap eh. Hindi natin naiintindihan kung para saan 'yun. Pero kung naiintindihan natin kung para saan 'yun, yung lahat ng pagpapahirap sa kanya nung pagkamatay niya sa krus, lahat ng dinaanan niya is para mapatawad ang kasalanan natin. Then makikita mo na wow, grabe, maiintindihan mo yung pagmamahal niya, yung kabutihan niya, yung mercy niya, yung goodness niya dahil ginawa niya lahat 'yun para sa iyo. So, yun lang. Brother Rod? Amen. Actually, I agree. Nakamute ko. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, napindot. No, and, and um, I believe it's Hebrews 9.22 that says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. You know, but in Hebrews 10, uh, I think verse 4, says that it is impossible for the blood of goats and bulls or yeah to, to take away sin. So, yung, yun nga, parang yung pinoint out ni Brother Eric, Pastor Macho, yung blood ni Jesus yung nag, ano eh, nagbayad sa sin natin. It is the blood of Jesus. And you know, the cross was the ultimate act of love. Because through the sacrifice, the shedding of blood of Jesus, yun ang nag-wash away yung sins natin lahat. Kaya tayo forgiven. So you have to understand the role of blood. You know, and ano ba yung blood na yun? We, we've thought on this before. You know, several times. I just don't remember the title of the message. But yung importante maintindihan natin na ano talaga nangyari sa cross. Ano nangyari? Ano yung value ng blood ni Jesus? You know, that's the blood of Jesus. Hindi lang dugo ng whatever yan. Dugo ni Jesus yan. Na si God yan na naging tao. He didn't have to do it, but He did it because He loves you. He loves us. So the cross is an act of love from God giving His only begotten Son so that When we believe in Him, we are forgiven. Yung sins natin washed away ng blood. It has absolutely everything to do with the forgiveness of your sins. And this is something you receive by faith. So yun lang. You know, I'm gonna, um, yun lang. Yun lang ang sakit ko dun. And uh, we hope that uh, that clears things up for you. So let's go with question number two. Question number two says, okay. The Bible says that Jesus forgave our sins 2,000 years ago on the cross. Okay? If I commit sin today, uh, I think how did that become typo? How does that affect me? And how does it affect my relationship with God? Do I lose my connection with God? Pastor Macho, you want to take this one? All right. The Bible says that Jesus forgave our sins 2,000 years on the cross. If I commit sin today... So, uh, how does that affect me? Actually, yung sin na nakukommit mo ngayon, it just... Nagputol yata. So, so yeah, I, I'll answer na lang. Um, yeah, the Bible says nga that Jesus forgave us 2,000 years ago on the cross. If I commit sin today, uh, how does it you know, affect? So, first of all, I think pinamaganda may tindyan, it's about faith. Kasi if Jesus died 2,000 years ago, and, and sabi ng Bible na because of that death, di ba, yung the whole payment is binayaran na. So, you need, we need to accept na yung blood ni Jesus eh, uh, ano na, sufficient na for our sin up to the future. Yung past, present, and future sin natin. So, you start with uh, yung salvation nga when you receive Jesus Christ. Yes, like 2,000 years ago, ganyan rin yung forgiveness. Jesus paid once and for, for all. Hebrews 9, Hebrews 10, nakalagay yun. Once and for all, even verse dyan, he, uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ, talagang, talagang binura niya yung sin natin. 
So, pero we we need faith to receive it. Kung ayaw mo apply yung faith, kung hindi mo ina-apply yung faith, bayad lang pero hindi mo pa makukuha. So, pwede kang if free free ni na tayo ni Jesus for the penalty nga ng sin, but it's our faith that freed us. So, pwede kang like kore, parang nakakulong ka. Parang tinanggal na yung penalty mo, so pinalaya ka na, tinanggal na yung binuksan na yung door, pero hanggang dinalakad mo yung palabas, nakakulong ka pa rin. So if you stay inside the yung yung jail nga, kulong ka pa rin. Kahit free ni ka na. Sobrang sobrang kailangan natin maintindihan yan kasi it's not hindi, hindi wala tayong ginawa para maging tama. It's just yung ginawa ni Jesus. So kaya yung next question, if I commit sin today, how does that affect me? Yung sin na ginagawa natin, now, it's it's that, it's just, pag may nagawa kang mali, we just reach out dun sa ginawang payment ni Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. So, he, Father, is, he God the Father, wala na yung sin na or penalty. Ngayon, so why do we need to, to reach out and receive that forgiveness? Is para sa atin, para walang magawa na yung kalaban. Kasi every sin na nagawa natin, o every, especially yung paulit-ulit, o yung bulong ng demonyo at ginawa natin, nagkakaroon sila ng right. Eh. So we just reach out, na paid na yan. I'm forgiven, I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Para wala na magawa yung kalaban. So how does it ito naman how does it affect my relationship with God? Actually wala. Do I lose my connection? Actually kay God wala. Ang connection ngayon is tayo. Every time patigas ka ng patigas sa sin ng ginagawa mo, palayo ka ng palayo kay God. Your heart is getting palayo ng palayo. So kay God, ang tingin pa rin niya sa atin is Jesus Christ. Pero ang problema is if you continue doing that sin Palayo ka ng palayo kigad. Hanggang isang araw maghid ka na. By isang araw mag-ayaw ka na kigad. So kigad is still the same. Ang, ang basihan ni God is sino may Jesus Christ at sino wala. Doon yung relationship natin. Hindi dahil nang sisin tayo, hindi. Kasi yung wrath ni God, yung galit niya sa sin, bayan na. So He never punish us for our sin. It's just... Pag nagsisin ka, you're opening a door para gumalaw yung demonyo. So you you ask forgiveness or you you repent of what you're doing to close that door lang. Then yung relationship will never change. So yun, Pastor Macho, yung kanina taposin mo na. Yeah, hindi ko nap- napotol ako. Yeah, yeah, yung sinabi mo, yun, yun naman yun eh. Actually, ang ano rito, if I commit sin today, how does that affect me? Ang nangyari dyan, if you commit sin, tapos hindi ka nag-renew ng mind mo, hindi mo ni-remind sa sarili mo that you're already forgiven, that you have Jesus in you, doon ka maapektuhan yan kasi makakagalaw ang kalaban sa'yo. Papasok ang shame, papasok ang guilt, papasok ang condemnation, doon ka niya nagagalaw. Pero pagdating doon sa relationship mo kay God, pagka nagpa-apekto ka doon sa guilt, shame, condemnation na yan, pagka nagpa-apekto ka doon, maapekto yung relationship mo sa kanya. Ikaw ah, Pero yung relationship ni God sa iyo, nandun lang naman, hindi siya nawawala. Hindi siya nagagalit, hindi na babawas ang pagmamahal niya sa iyo. Mahal ka pa rin niya. Ang problema, pag naapekto ka at hindi ka nag-renew ng mind mo kung sino ka in Christ, dun ngayon naapektuhan. Kaya napaka-importante ng renewal of mind. Hindi yung si, si God, hindi nawawala sa iyo. Ikaw ngayon yung lumalayo. Kasi naka-hard din yung heart mo, iniisip mo, you're not worth, ano ka na, parang bitin ka na, parang hindi na pwede, uh, alanganin ka na, kasi yun ang ginagawa ng kalaban. So ang gagawin lang natin, renew our mind, ang Panginoon nandyan lang, mag, may, may magawa ka man na hindi maganda o may, may pagkakasala kang gawin, balik ka lang, dahil bayad yun. You renew your mind, change direction, change course, and remind yourself that Christ is in you, then diretsyo, lakad mo. Huwag kang tumingin dun sa mga ano, dati inano ko ito, in, in example ko na ito, di ba yung sa... Ano tawag dito sa track and field, di ba? Yung may nakita ka ba kapag tumatakbo, di ba? Pagka tinamaan nila yung ano tawag noon, yung ano tawag noon, yung pag tinatalon nila, hurdle, yung, hurdle. Yung, nila, di ba? Hindi naman nila kapag pag, pag tinamaan naman nila yon, hindi naman oh, hindi naman nila itatayo pa yun, eh. diretso lakad. So ganoon din tayo, diretso takbo. 
Diretso focus our mind. One thing is needed, diretso focus na kay Jesus. Tumingin tayo ron. Ayan na natin yun. Renew our mind, diretso dun sa course natin. Yan lang. Brother Rod? You know, I think I know where this question is coming from. Kasi may mga ibang nagtuturo na when you commit sin, you get disconnected from God. Okay, so I, I, I've heard that teaching before. I've heard people say na every time mag-sin ka, pinuputol mo yung relationship mo kay God. Which is, you know, I, I, the condemnation yun. Romans 8.1, therefore now, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You know, guys, the Bible tells us, whatever is not of faith is sin. So, sige nga, sino dito wala? <laughs> Di ba? Sino dito perfect na never isang araw wala kang ginawang mali wala kang naisip na mali wala kang according to God's standard you know and, and, and the book of James says kung sino nagsasabing wala siyang sin he's a liar diba? <laughs> sino nga haling ka pag wala kang ganun so anyway yung point lang is lahat tayo may sin pa rin na ginagawa okay ang kinuha sa atin is yung sin nature uh, please check out our uh, my teaching called spirit, soul, and body you have to check that video out to understand this so Spirit, soul, and body. We are made up of three parts. Diba? First Thessalonians 5.23, we are made up of spirit and soul and body. When you, when you uh, quickly, before you are born again, you are spiritually dead. You have a soul and a body. And there is a sin nature. So when Jesus died on the cross, when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you receive his Holy Spirit, you receive his forgiveness, the sin nature is nailed to the cross and you are born again in the spirit. Okay? So if you commit, you, and now God deals with you spirit to spirit. Your spirit is absolutely one with the Holy Spirit. Your spirit is now pure and whole and holy and blameless. Para sa amin ni Brother Eric, yung tingin sa'yo ni God is tingin niya kay Jesus Christ. Kasi the spirit of Christ lives in you. So if you commit sin today, how does it affect you? Your spirit, God still looks at you the same way he loves you, you are forgiven, and he sees Christ in you. How does that affect your flesh, your sin, your, your soul, and your body? If you commit sin, you just go back to God's grace. Now, if you refuse to repent from sin, ibang usapan yun. Hindi yung iba yung commit sin na nagkamali ako. Iba yung willful na may sin na kung ayaw bitawan. May sin na kung ayaw ko i-repent. Now, if you, if you have that problem, na you have a sin that you don't want to let go or don't ano or you have compromised and considered it and then okay lang yan tatanggapin ni God. How does that affect your relationship with God? God still loves you. God doesn't look at you any less. Hindi ka itatapon ni God. Hindi ka ikokondem ni God. How does that affect your soul and your body? You open a door for the enemy to, to afflict your soul and your body. Kung meron kang sin na ayaw mong bitawan, ayaw mong ganito, tingin mo okay lang yan, maintindihan ni God yan, you will live in sin despite knowing the word. You know, you subject your flesh, your soul, and your body to an attack from the enemy. So how does that affect you? That, that's how it affects you. If it's, if it's sin and, and you made a mistake, you did this, you did that, you just go back to God's grace. Balikan mo lang yung cross. Lord, thank you that I've been forgiven 2,000 years ago. Thank you that I am born again. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you that you will never leave me nor forsake me. Thank you that you will not abandon me because you're a good God. Thank you for your forgiveness. Tapos, how does it affect your relationship with God? Hindi si God yung may problema. Para sa mga brother Eric kanina, if you harden your heart and keep on violating your own conscience and keep on returning to that sin, you know, baka mamaya di mo na mapansin ang Ikaw din tumalikot ka na kay God. Do you lose your connection with God? No. But, you know, if you harden your heart, you might lead yourself to that situation. So, I guess you have to differentiate here. Medyo maano yung question. Ito ba yung nagsin ka lang, nagkamali ka, nagkalit ka, ganito, may nagawa kang mali, and then you, you turn back to the Lord, and you say, Lord, sorry, I made a mistake. Yung ganun, ibang usapan yun, di ba? Ibang usapan yun dun sa sin na wala ka ng balak magbago. Wala ka ng balak magbago. Wala ka ng balak talikuran. Tinanggap mo na siya na, hindi, okay lang yan, mahitin mo. Uh, so, yun lang. That, that's all I want to add for you. Anything else you guys want to add? Okay. That's good. All right, let's move to the next question. Question number three. 
says, some Christians believe in hyper-grace teaching, okay? where all of our past, present, and future sins have been forgiven, so it's okay to commit sin because God has dealt with it. Ah, okay. May konting totoo yung sinabi mo sa forgiveness, pero yung okay to commit sin, hindi, hindi yan yung grace na ano. Okay, how do you reconcile this with the Bible's call for repentance and holiness? You want to start with this, Brother Eric? Yeah. Yung hyper-grace teaching naman, it's more of, na isa-isa natin, somebody who believe in hyper-grace teaching where all of our uh, past, present, future sin have been forgiven. Actually, tama yan. It's, it's, it's not hyper-grace. It's grace. Jesus paid past, present, and future sins. That's all. Di ba? I, I, so, set muna natin na lahat ng kasalanan natin dati and present and future. So, it's sin. It's, ang, ang sin na pinag-usapan ng binayaran Jesus is the noun. Noun na sin. So the noun na sin in Greek is ano eh, uh, missing the mark. So what do we mean by missing? Yung mark na sinet ni God, we all miss it. So yun yung sin. Kaya doon nakagalaw si Satan. So hindi ito hyper grace. It's more of dahil sa ginawa ni Jesus and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father, binigyan niya tayo na mawala yung missing the mark. So it's Jesus doing it para hindi na tayo missing the mark. Kasi may hyper grace. Ang hyper grace kay Turo is wala nang faith. Lahat ginawa na ni God, okay ka na. Maniwala ka hindi, sa'yo yun. Actually, yes, sa'yo yun. Pero we need the, our faith to receive. So, kailangan balance yan ng grace and faith. Grace is anong ginawa ni Jesus. Faith is part natin. To receive, ano yung ginawa ni Jesus. Sa hyper-grace kasi, medyo tinatanggal din nila yung faith. Basta ginawa ni Jesus, sa'yo na yun. In a sense, yes. Pero we need to receive it by faith. So yung forgiveness ng past, present, future sin mo is we need, like sabi nga ni Brother Ron, tatlo kami nagsabi na yung ginawa ni Jesus, you need to receive that by faith. Nasa'yo na yun hanggang future. By faith mo re-receive it yun. Tapos yung next, so it's okay to commit sin. Siyempre hindi. If you know, if you really receive Jesus Christ kasi alam mong hindi mo kaya o sinner ka, kaya rinisip mo si Jesus Christ para bayarin sin. So bakit re-receive, really kung tunay mo rinisip si Jesus Christ para linisin kasalanan mo, bakit ka babalik sa kasalanan? So medyo may mali yung pagka-receive. So it's not okay to commit sin, di ba? Because God has dealt with it. Yeah, sa part ni God, hindi na tayo paparusahin dahil sa sin because may nagbayad. But we still need to receive it. Like kanina question, yung question number two, when you keep on committing sin, yun, like sabi ng brother Ron, differentiate mo yung isang pagkakamali lang tsaka yung sin na ayaw mo alisan. Alam mo mali, pero ayaw mo alisan. Then, uh, gali, and then, Romans 6.16, di ba? You are servant to whom you yield. So kung, kung feeling mo masaya ka doon sa mali, then you're, you're becoming a servant doon sa nag-yield ka doon eh. O paniwala mo dahil kay Jesus Christ, you are overcome, you're overcomer. At yung mga alam mo mali, by the grace of God, kaya mo na alisan yun. So how do you reconcile this with Bible called repentance and holiness? Ang repentance lang, like yung, yung name namin, it's metanoia, turning away. For me, and which I believe is, repentance is one time. When you realize how sinful you are, when you realize how palpak ang pagkatao mo, then you repent and receive Jesus Christ. So repentance is turning away. So ayaw mo na yung buhay na palpak mo. So you turn away, that's one time. So kung nagkamali ka ulit, kore nagkasin ka o nagkano, you just go back to the first repentance ang ginawa mo by reaching out na bayad na yung palpak ko pero balik ako dito sa turning away ko. 
So, it's not you do one thing, then repent. Kung hindi ka nag-repent, may op- uh, galit na si God o wala na yung connection. Repentance is one. For me, really, it's one time. You can repent naman out of para sa sarili mo. And para kay Satan, na kinoclose mo yung door. Pero para kay God, yung one time turning away and you receive Jesus Christ, okay na kay God yun. So, kung nagkamali ka, like, hindi naman sadya o... o wala yung the flesh is ano di ba ano the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak so nagka weak yung flesh mo nagawa mo yung mali just go back to the repentance or the forgiveness na ginawa ni Jesus Christ na sa yun so kahit hindi mo na kailangan hintayin kung if you forgive ka ni God o hindi you just reach out sa ginawa ni Christ kasi yung holiness naman kung tayo gagawa niyan ito tanong ko may kilala ka ba o may nakita ka pa na taong pwede natin sabi pasado yung holiness ni God? I don't think wala kang mabibigay sa ang tao na may. So, why God asking us for holiness? Kasi yun yung standard niya. The good thing is, alam ni God, di natin kaya. So, when you receive Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit come in and sanctified us. Sanctified is make holy. So, balik ka pa rin sa ginawa ulit ni Jesus. And by faith, nung rinisin mo si Jesus Christ, si Holy Spirit, pumasok ka at ginawa ka ng holy. Colossians uh, ano eh? 2 Alimutan ko na yung ano eh. Di ba? Yung, yung we are complete tapos blameless di ba? holy, blameless, and beyond reproach. Dahil kay Jesus Christ. Nasa Colossians 2 yun ma naalala ni Brother Rodney. Pero yung nga, ang point ko is ginawa na ni Jesus Christ lahat. So ang point na itong lahat is when you realize how sinful you are na hindi mo kaya, you just receive ginawa ni Jesus Christ. So kung tutong rinisin mo si Jesus Christ, hindi mo nababalikan yung dati mong pagkatao. So yun lang. Pastor Macho, Brother Ron. Yeah, I completely agree. Yung nga, yung hyper grace teaching na wala yung faith. So, titignan nyo pa lang dito eh, na yung past, present, and future sins have already been forgiven. So, napatawad na tayo. So, ito yung grace eh. Ito yung tinanggap natin na grace. So, kung tinanggap mo yung grace at naintindihan mo yung grace at naranasan mo yung grace na yung nakaraan, yung ngayon, at future sins mo ay napatawad, yan yung grace Parang napaka ano naman yata na sabi mo ko okay to commit sin. Kasi unang-una, grace Titus 2, it teaches us to deny all ungodliness and worldly lust. So hindi mo ina ito kayang gawin, hindi mo na ito i alam mo yun, hindi, hindi na pwedeng mag hindi mo hindi deny mo kasi yun yung grace, eh, tinanggap mo siya. Eh. Hindi talaga nga uh, Sobrang sobrang mahal na mahal mo siya dahil tinanggap mo yung pagmamahal niya na intindihan mo yung binigay niya na intindihan mo yung pagpapatawad ng kasalanan na tanggap mo. Ididenay mo itong mga to. Hindi mo sasabing okay lang. Kasi yun nga yung pinayaran niya eh. So parang parang sinabi mo na rin doon na sige pa pa parang 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 binali wala mo yung ginawa niya. Parang ganoon kasi ang, ang ano rito eh. So dapat dating maintindihan na binayaran niya yung kasalanan mo eh. So, na, kaya, mo bang, kaya mo bang isipin na parang mayat maya mo siyang binabalik sa cross para doon sa kasalanan mo? Parang dapat maintindihan mo yung tinanggap mo. So, it's not okay to commit sin because grace teaches us to deny all ungodliness. And then, you know, how do you reconcile this with the Bible's call for repentance? Yun nga, yung repentance, one time kay God yun, yung ginagawa na lang natin repentance is change direction, balik ka doon sa binayaran niya. And yung holiness, it will come out kasi si Jesus naman yun eh. Hindi mo kayang gawin sa sarili mong kaparaanan at sa sarili mong kakayanan. It is only through grace and it's only through Jesus. Brother Ron? Amen. Very good, brother. I, I, brothers, I agree wholeheartedly with everything. Now, you've got Titus 2, 11 and 12. The, for the grace of God has appeared to all men, bringing salvation, teaching us to deny ungodliness and all worldly lusts. And so, guys, yung grace is the solution. Kaya tayo magiging holy. Dahil binigay ni God yun by grace. Hindi holy ka dahil sa sariling sikap. Hindi ka holy dahil madalas ka mag-attend sa church. Hindi ka holy dahil masipag ka magbasa ng Bible. Holy ka dahil kay Jesus Christ. Period. Okay? So, to manifest that holiness, you need God's grace. Diba? 
yung repentance, I agree completely, repentance unto salvation. Guys, kailangan natin linawin to eh. Yung repentance magkaiba sa confession. Yung repentance magkaiba sa renewal of mind. Yung repentance unto salvation, turn away. Hindi pwedeng turn away, turn away, turn away, turn away, every day turn away. Hindi repentance yun. ba? Diba? Repetition yung tawag dyan. So, yung point ko lang is if you repent, you turn away from the old and you become a new creation to God. You know, if you fall in the sin, you make a mistake, go back to that. Renew your mind. Go back to that. Now, Lord, thank you that I am a new creation. Thank you that my sin has been covered. It's not okay to sin. It's not okay. Sin is unacceptable to God. Kaya nga binigyan tayo ng grace to overcome that. Na wala na yung sin nature. To nail the flesh to the cross. Kaya nga we have been crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20 It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So whenever you fall into sin or you make a mistake, you have God's grace over there. What do you do? You say, Lord, you acknowledge it. You, you sin. I confess. Iba yung confess, iba yung repent. You confess. You confess, you apologize, you humble yourself before the Lord. Sorry, kamali ako. Balik ako sa grace. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you that I am a new creation in Christ. Thank you. And I renew my mind in that truth that I have a new identity in Christ. So there is no conflict between grace and repentance and holiness. Actually, iisa lang yan. Nag-repent ka, you receive by faith God's grace. God's grace teaches you to deny ungodliness. God's Holy Spirit is who makes you holy. So it's not your actions to holiness. It's your identity in Christ. So you love. Question number four. Okay. Question number four it says, if I choose not to forgive someone, the Bible says that the Father will not forgive me. So, ano to? Mark 11 to. Okay, so if I die without forgiving someone, does that mean I will go to hell? Interesting question. You know, um, uh, I encourage you to watch yung, yung teaching ko called the, the Lord's Prayer. Kasi yung sa Lord's Prayer, um, I, I discussed there, I'm not going to do it now because it takes time. But um, in Lord's Prayer, I talk about the dispensations of the Bible. And I'm not talking about dispensation theology. It's just an easy way to explain. Uh, long story short, quick explanation. God does not change. God is God. However, the way he deals with people throughout the history of mankind has changed. Iba nung panahon ni ng Old Testament, by Moses, by law, Old Testament dispensation, iba yun. Iba rin yung dispensation nung nasa gospel. Ibi, ibig sabihin, Sa gospel, technically, Old Testament pa rin sila kasi si Jesus nandun na in the flesh pero hindi pa siya na-crucify, hindi pa siya nag-resurrect. So, hindi pa bayad lahat ng sins natin. Okay? Today, we live in the age of grace. After the resurrection, after the crucifixion, after the finished work of Christ. Now, right now, 2 Peter 3.9, The Lord is not willing that any of us perish but all come to repentance. 1 John 2 verse 2, that Jesus is the propitiation for our sins, not only our sins, but the sins of the world. Diba? So, iba na yung same si God, di nagbabago si God, pero iba na yung pakikitungo niya sa atin ngayon. You know, the last dispensation is the end times. Iba, we talked about that last time. But anyway, um, Jesus said this in Mark 11. This was prior to his crucifixion. If you choose not to forgive someone, the Bible says the Father will not forgive you. You know what? Jesus has taken that upon himself on the cross. Lahat ng sin natin. The only, if you're a believer, a genuine believer of Jesus Christ, the only sin that sent you to hell is rejecting Jesus Christ. Diba? So, you know, it's not, hindi babawiin ni God yung salvation mo dahil, ah, nabuisit ka sa ganito, namatay ka na, may unforgiveness ka. Oh, hindi, impero ka na. Hindi ganun yung heart ni God. You know, if you reject Jesus, that that's what that it's not losing salvation. You can you are you have the free will to reject the salvation, but God will not steal it away from you. Diba? So itong forgiveness issue at the same time, just to point out, it's also not a good thing to harbor unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is definitely not pleasing to God. It's definitely not okay. Unforgiveness is poison to you 
in your life. Unforgiveness is an open door for the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy in your life. Brother Eric and Pastor Matra and I minister to a lot of people who are sick. Majority of, of cancer cases that we have dealt with, a root problem is unforgiveness. You know, so it's not that God stops loving you. Again, I agree, Mark 11, they are the words of Jesus. I'm not questioning that. Pero, intindihin nga natin that this was the gospel dispensation. It's a different story today. You know, so I'm not endorsing unforgiveness. I mean, that's a horrible thing to harbor. Pero yung point po lang is intindihin natin yung nangyari sa cross of Christ. Brother Eric. Ah, uh, yeah. Yun, if I yung, if I choose not to forgive, like, you know, let's see, let's start with sabi ni Brother Ron na you have to distinguish yung ginawa ni Jesus Christ. Eh. Like, may turo rin, I, I think meron ako si Brother Ron, si Pastor Macho rin, yung rightly dividing the word of truth. Eh. Saan si Jesus? Eh? And even this forgiveness, saan si Jesus? If you think that we asking forgiveness, yun yung magtatanggal ng sin natin. That medyo tinatanggal mo yung ginawa ni Jesus Christ. So, like this, if I choose to forgive someone, I, I choose not pala. Sa akin, ito natutunan ko. If you understand how much na-receive mong forgiveness at yung ginawa ni Jesus Christ para sa sin mo, hindi mahirap mag-forgive ng tao. If you really value yung ginawa ni Jesus Christ. Kasi makikita mo maliit lang yung yung ginawa ng tao. Grabe yung ginawa ni Jesus Christ just to forgive us from all our sin. So, yung forgiveness, kung nahirapan ka, kung sino man ang kasi, nahirapan ka mag-forgive, huwag mapilitin. Alam mo gawin mo? Intindihin mo how much binahay ni Jesus Christ para sa kasalanan natin. Then maging madali sa iyo to forgive. Di ba? Kung napipilitan ka, i-value mo muna yung forgiveness na na-receive mo kay Jesus Christ. So the second, the Bible said that the Father will not forgive me. Ito yung sa ano, Lord's Prayer. Eh? If you forgive someone, di ba? So, like yun nga, yun, yun, kailangan maintindihan saan gawa ni Jesus Christ. Eh. Nung sinabi ni Jesus Christ yun, hindi pa siya, nagbab- hindi pa siya napapako. Yun, hindi pa siya namamatay sa cross. So, andun pa rin yung sin natin. So, if I did uh, without forgiving someone, does not mean I go to hell? Actually, yun nga, yung question na kung hindi mo kaya mag-forgive, hindi mo naintindihan ang ginawa ni Christ. Eh. Kung hindi mo naman naintindihan ang ginawa ni Christ, medyo... I'm not saying you're going to hell. Pero baka hindi mo naintindihan bakit mo re-deceive si Jesus Christ. Like sabi nga ng brother Ron, you know, we have been ministering sa mga may sakit. Normally, unforgiveness yung cause. Especially cancer. And sama mo na rin lahat ng negative emotion. Bitterness, anger. Doon nagsisimula lahat ng sakit. Hindi naman lahat majority ng sakit galing doon sa mga negative emotion. So yun lang, if you really cannot forgive, go back, intindi mo ano yung binayaran ni Jesus Christ parsa. So yun, Pastor Macho. Yeah, agree lahat ako doon sa sinabi niyo. Ngayon nga, uh, yung nagtanong kasi dito, eh, nga, if I choose not to forgive someone, you know, unforgiveness is a stronghold kasi. And it opens the door for the enemy para guluhin yung isip mo at uh, stronghold yan sa'yo sa buhay mo kung kapag ka i-choose mong not to forgive. Kasi kung yan ang iniisip mong mas kaya mong i-choose na not to forgive, then balik ka nga sa cross. Katulad na sinabi ni Brother Eric, you have to go back to the cross because the cross is the manifestation of God's love and goodness and forgiveness. Yun doon mo makikita yun sa cross. Kaya kailangan maintindihan mo yun kasi hindi na... Pag naiintindihan mo kung ano yung pinagbayaran niya sa cross, hindi, hindi na papasok sa isip mo yung not to forgive. Kasi ma- mahirap ang unforgiveness. It, it, it opens doors, uh, mabubuksan yung sa, kala- sa kaaway, negative emotion. Andiyan yan, hinaharbor mo eh. So nakakagalawang kaaway dyan. 
So if I die forgive uh, die without forgiving someone, it aligns to the Lord's prayer. It's in Matthew 6, na sinasabi na if you if you don't forgive, your father in heaven will not forgive you. Yeah, dispensation. Kailangan maintindihan natin that was before the cross. Ang that, ngayon kasi we live in the age of grace. So it's not about what you do. It's about what Jesus has done first. Yung ginawa muna ni Jesus. Yun ang titignan natin kung ano yung ginawa niya. So kung ano yung ginawa niya, pag nakita mo, naintindihan mo, tinanggap mo yung ginawa niya, nakakunawaan mo ng gusto, ano nangyari sa cross, then you will be able to forgive. Yung go to hell. Uh, si Jesus, na tinanggap mo si Jesus eh. Assuming you're a Christian. Although hindi nakalagay dito, but tinasama sa Bible. But assuming you're a Christian and you accepted Jesus, it's about Jesus has done first at hindi yung ginawa mo. Yung nga lang, habang nandito ka sa mundo, at you are harboring unforgiveness, it really opens the door for the enemy. In love. Amen. Next question. Question number five. Says, ayan, aha. Ano to? Is it true that if I do not forgive someone, a demon will possess me? Pastor Macho, baka pwede mo unahan to. Ikaw na, brother Eric. <laughs> Medyo, medyo tama rin at medyo nakakatakot pag, di ba, parang yan kagad. Uh, pero we have cast out many demons dahil sa unforgiveness. <laughs> di ba? So, I think better gawin mo doctrine to para mas madali kang mag-forgive ng tao. <laughs> di ba? <laughs> Uh, I think, uh, kahit sabi mong hindi ganyan ka ano, pero better nga talaga gawin mong doctrine. Para, ma, para hindi ka mag-harbor ng hate. Hindi ka mag-harbor ng unforgiveness. Hindi ka mag-harbor ng, di ba, ng, ng sama ng loob. So, yun lang, yun lang. I think, it's a good, yeah, naisip ko ngayon, it's good talaga na maging doctrine mo to. <laughs> That's from macho, brother Ron. Okay yun na, okay yun, okay yun na isip mo ha. O nga no, o nga, ba't yan ang iisipin mo? Wah, ba na, ma, mag-isip-isip ka kung ayaw magpatawad. Anyway, yun nga, yung unforgiveness, it opens a door, it's it's a stronghold. Pero yung possess, if you if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Jesus is already in you eh. Yung possess, parang hindi na ako ano dyan sa possess. Oppressed, you may be oppressed, influenced, pero yung possession medyo ano na ako dyan. Yun lang. Okay yung sinabi ng Brother Eric. <laughs> you, you've got to forgive. Isipin mo, patay ka. <laughs> Brother Ron. I agree. Uh, hindi possess yung tamang word. You know, actually, the, the proper word here is maybe demonized or demon influenced. Pero not possess. Kasi possession denotes ownership. Eh. You know, medyo uh, yun nga. May, may, may konting point opening to hindi ko masasabing automatic unforgiveness tapos demonyo kagad ay hindi naman siguro but walang benefit mag-harbor ng unforgiveness eh kumbaga talo ka lang talaga dun eh so yun um, natawa ko dun sa Abri Brother Mary pero oo nga totoo totoo talaga you know just there's no benefit for harboring unforgiveness you know wala talaga walang, walang magandang mangyayari dun Parang sinabi mo, may hawak akong lason. Pero di ko iinumin, itatabi ko lang sa bibig ko. <laughs> Anong an lakas ng trip mo? Ba't mo gagawin yun? Di ba? There's no benefit to doing it. So just toss it away. Di ba? Unforgiveness is poison. Just get rid of it. So yun lang. Question number six. Question number six, it says, why is it so hard to forgive others? Even if I confess it and say it verbally, my heart is still heavy and I still still feel angry at the person. How do I deal with this? Pastor Macho, may nasagot kang konti nito kanina. Paka pwede mo tulad. Oh yeah, okay. Why is it so hard to forgive others? Alam nyo, talaga ang magpatawad. Mahirap talaga eh. Even the apostles, di ba remember sa Luke 17 nung uh, tinuturo ni Jesus about forgiveness na 70 times 7 na uh, ilang beses kang ano, magpatawad ka. Even the apostles at that time, sabi nila, Lord, increase our faith. Isipin mo, never naman sila nagsabi na increase our faith nung they were casting out demons, they were uh, healing the sick. No, ay nako, medyo matindi yung ketong nito. Medyo hindi namin ka, Lord, increase our faith. Never! Hindi sila nag-ihingi ng pat pat pataasin mo yung pananap. No. Pero pagdating dito sa pagpapatawad, 
Lord, increase our faith. Pero alam niyo kung bakit nila nasabi yun? Actually, kasi yung cross di pa nangyayari. The total forgiveness, yung total goodness, yung love ni God, hindi pa nila nararanasan ng gusto kasi hindi pa siya namatay sa cross. Kaya itong question mo na ito, kapatid, you go back to the cross and you see at makita mo at, at balikan mo at tignan mo anong binayaran niya sa cross. Kasi once na you understand kung anong binayaran niya sa cross at lahat ng yun ginawa niya, gawin mo personal, hindi sa lahat ng tao, ginawa niya yun para sa'yo. Ginawa niya yun para sa'yo. Sa'yo, gawin mong personal. Pag ginawa mong personal yan at bumalik ka dun sa, sa, sa ginawa ng Panginoong Yeso Kristo para sa'yo, yung pagpapatawad magiging automatic na lang. Ephesians 4.32 nandiyan yan. We forgive because Christ forgave us first. Pinatawad niya muna tayo eh. Kaya pag hirap tayo magpatawad, intindihin natin, teka muna, baka hindi ko yata natanggap, ha? baka hindi ko naintindihan yung pagpapatawad ng Panginoon. Balikan mo si Jesus. Balikan mo yung heart ni God. Balikan mo yung Bible. Dahil ito, ito eh, pagka hindi ka magpatawad, alam mo sino ba talo? Ikaw eh. Kasi yung tao hindi mo patawad, okay lang naman siya eh. Palagay mo ba, katulad siya nung nararanasan mo, nahirap na hirap ka, pigil na pigil ka, pagod na pagod ka, heavy yung heart mo. Palagay mo ba siya heavy? Ikaw pa rin talo eh, kahit saan mo tignan eh. Talo ka pa rin. So bakit hindi ka nalang bumalik kay Jesus at tignan mo maigi Lord, thank you. Kasi even yung kana, pakanipis-tipis pong naging kasalanan nung araw, si nung bata ka, eh pinatawad niya nga eh. Hanggang sa pinakamalaking nagawa mo noon. Pinatawad niya yung kinalimutan niya. Clean slate yun. Justified ka. As if you never sinned. Yun ang ginawa ng Panginoon para sa'yo. Pag yun ma-quicken ma, ma, ma sa'yo at mabuhay sa espiritu mo, sa puso mo, maintindihan mo, y- y- yung, yung forgiving, yung pagpapatawad, it'll be just automatic for you. And harboring unforgiveness, sobrang hirap na, sobrang bigat niyan. Talo ka dyan, kapatid. We, we go back to the cross. We look at Jesus. Focus tayo kay Jesus. Yun lang. Brother Eric? Yeah, tama nga. It's yung unforgiveness, like sa um, Pastor Majo, sa loob mo, you're creating a poison. Yung nag, nagkaka-poison, may poison na sa loob ng loob mo na hindi, hindi mo lang sa araw kinakain ka na. So, kasi, ito rin, I just want to make clear, kasi isip ng tao, if you forgive someone, kailangan mo nang puntahan, yakapa, yakapin, tapos maging close na kayo ulit, yung mga ganyan. Pwede mangyari yun, pero pag yung tao talaga, it's really a bad guy or masama at alam mo may gagawin masama. Ang forgiveness naman, it's not doing mabuti sa kabila. It's more of you releasing yung hate, yung galit, yung, yung na-cause na negative emotion sa iyo. So when you forgive, you're releasing yourself from all the poison na na yun nga nagko-cause ng negative emotion. So sobrang importante kung hirap ka pa rin, like sabi yung Pastor Macho, which yun nga sasabi nga namin, go back to the cross. Go back how much Jesus paid for our sin. Uh, yung heavy and feel angry, yun nga, yun yung tinatanggal mo when you forgive. And it's a, tinatanggal mo yung man-negative emotion. So, like sabi ng Pastor Macho, yung, yung nag-ask sila ng, di ba, increase our faith, yun yung, yun yung udang sabi ng Jesus na if you should forgive it. So, dun sila ng tanong. So, forgiveness is applying your faith. By yung, with, di ba, with your mouth, Uh, you confess with your heart you believe so you start checking your heart do you really want to forgive kung talagang gusto mo then by faith apply mo at release mo yung galit or unforgive, yung forgiveness na yun doon sa tao o isang group ng tao ano man sino man nagkaagi sa iyo diba? so yun lang brother Ron Amen actually I, I have nothing really to add to that kompleto na yung sagot niyo And I agree completely with what you said, bro. Forgiveness is applying your faith. You know, nahihirapan ka, balik ka lang kay Jesus. In- intindihin mo kung anong meron natanggap mo. Diba? Intindihin mo rin kung ano yung na-forgive sa'yo. Anong ginawa ni Christ para sa'yo. And who are we to withhold that from others? Diba? So yun lang, yun lang. Let's go. Question number seven. Last question for this evening says, how does unforgiveness hinder 
God's blessings from manifesting in my life. So yung unahan ko na to. You know, I, I touched on this a while ago about spirit, soul, and body. And, you know, yung unforgiveness really leaves an open door. You know, yung blessings ni God, nandiyan na eh. Binigay na eh. Diba? Ephesians 1.3, He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Diba? The problem is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is still sin. You know, unforgiveness is still sin. And if you willingly or willfully engage in it, willfully violate your heart and your conscience in it, you leave a door open for the enemy sa buhay mo. You leave, you create a wall. Para sa ni Pastor Macho, yung unforgiveness, stronghold din. So a stronghold will keep you prisoner. A stronghold, it's not, it's not, guys, I don't I don't want you to view God as transactional na, ha, may unforgiveness to. Ayaw niyang patawarin. Hindi na kita ibabless. That's not true. Because God already blessed us through Jesus Christ. God already said yes and amen to all His promises through Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. So, hindi sa, hindi sa we withhold the God. It's not God withholding His blessing. It's more on, ikaw yung nag-create ng para o ikaw nag-create ng wall. Isa, isipin mo, faucet. Diba, gripo. Andiyan naman yung tubig eh. Lalabas at lalabas yan eh. Yung unforgiveness, para mo sinaksakan ng, ano yun, ng pambara sa loob. Tapos sabi, ba't ko ng tubig? Eh, binara mo eh. So, hindi kasalanan yun nung nagbibigay ng tubig. Hindi kasalanan yun ng, pro- ng service provider. Kasalanan mo kung na ikaw nagbara. You know? So, hindi ka na nag-exercise ng faith. You created your own uh, obstacle to receive God's blessings. So, yun lang. Brother Eric? Yeah, and, and unforgiveness, normally kasi, if, hindi naman normally, it's, yun yung, pag unforgiveness, it's part of the flesh. Flesh mo yun eh. Kasi yung fruit of the spirit, walang unforgiveness eh. So if you cannot forgive, then maybe you're not mine dun sa spirit mo. So, kung may hirap, like kanina nga, yung mahirap mag-forgive, it's, you're walking the flesh. So, ang point dito, ang point ko is, balik ka sa spirit mo, kasi andun yung blessing. Kasi like, yung nga, Ephesians 1, 3, we are blessed with all spiritual blessing in the heaven, in the heaven list. So, so, ang point ko, eh, maputol nyo yung type. Uh, so, ang point ko is, let's go back dun sa So, let's go back nga dun sa Nawala yung ano, pero hindi mal. So, ang point ko is, you have to evaluate if you're walking the flesh or walking the spirit. Uh, Romans 8.6 nga, you set your mind on the spirit para matutunan mo paano mag-forgive. Diba? So, yun lang. I, I just want makita nyo na nahihirapan mag-forgive kasi nasa flesh ka. But you understand and renew your mind sino ka sa spirit, dun, madali mag-forgive. Kasi dun papasok si love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and lahat na yun. So yun, yun lang. Pastor Macho. Yeah, yeah. Pare- parehas lang. Mga sinabi nyo, actually, ang kailangan nyo lang, inti- kailangan mo lang intindihin dito kung sino man yung nagtanong nito na hindi si God yung nagbe-withhold ng blessings kasi binigay niya na yun eh. Kung meron man, nag- kung meron mang nakaharang dyan at nagbibigay ng harang dyan, it's yung unforgiveness na nilagay mo dyan sa puso mo. Kasi hindi naman niya naabot dyan kung hindi mo pinayagan. So, it's up to you na siguro it's about time that you Tagbalik mo yung unforgiveness na yan kasi harang talaga yan. Magiging harang yan at nagagamit ng kaawa yan. Katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, unforgiveness is a stronghold. It is a stronghold of the enemy in your life. Out na yan. So, ibig sabihin, pag stronghold, andyan siya. Naka, naka, stronghold. Stronghold nga. Eh. Di ba? Yung parang ituro ko dito na isa siyang fortress na nandun siya. Kumukuya-kuya-ko yung, kumukuya-kuya ko yung kalaban dun. Tuwan-tuwa na sa unforgiveness mo. Kaya nabablock. Kaya nahaharangan yung blessings na pumasok sa buhay. Hindi lang, hindi lang siya nakakaharang sa blessings. Nagiging open door din siya dun sa mga problema ang papas. So let's, let's, ano, let's get rid of unforgiveness. Yun lang. Amen. 
So, guys, you know, I think very straightforward about the one or nothing. And these are a lot of questions that, you know, I know a lot of people deal with. At the end of the day, balikan lang natin grace na God. Balikan natin love ni God. Balikan natin identity in Christ. Balikan natin finished work of the cross. Unforgiveness will not be a challenge. Forgiving others will not be a, a struggle if you understand how much God loves you and how much you have been forgiven. Diba? So, yeah, in love, that concludes our evening uh, for question and answer. And, you know, guys, if you have more questions, just send it our way, private message or through uh, here, you know, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that later on. So, as we close, can I ask you, Pastor Macho, can you close us in prayer tonight? All right, let's, get, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much, Panginoon, sa gabing ito, Lord God, na patuloy na naman na kumapaw kami sa inyong salita, Lord. Lord, we thank you. And right now, Lord God, I, I, I release the power of the Holy Spirit that if anyone here is still harboring unforgiveness, right now that he decides and that the Holy Spirit would touch you right now to get rid of that unforgiveness because that unforgiveness would really block blessings and it opens door for the enemy to ruin your life. So right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak blessing upon each and every one of us, each and every one of the people that is listening at the other side of this camera. Nagkaroon sila ng revelation of, of, of Jesus' love, ang pagmamahal ng Panginoon, na maunawaan ninyo kung gano'n tayong pinatawad ng Panginoon at ang lahat ng dinaanan sa Kus ay para sa atin. Gawin natin personal ito. Pagkat ito'y totoo at ginawa niyang ito lahat para sa atin at walang pumilit sa Kanya. Ginawa niya ito para sa atin. Let's go back to His love. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. See all you right. guys on Monday. Monday. Bye, guys. God bless. See you on Monday.